In this last video of chapter 3, we will define the space H10. Let me start with a remark. D is dense in L2, but it is not dense in H1. And you're probably wondering, okay, how is this even possible? I mean, H1 is smaller than L2, right? It's included in L2. So how can D be dense in L2, but not dense in a smaller space of L2? That makes no sense. Well, you're right, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't if I don't say what density I'm talking about. When I'm saying D is dense in L2, I mean D is dense with the topology of L2, the one that comes from the norm of L2. But in H1, I have another topology, because I have a different norm, and these two norms are not equivalent. So the topology of H1 is different than the topology of L2, and for that topology of H1, D is not dense. This remark being made, let me define the space H10. H10 is the pre-image of 0, 0 by the trace operator. So in a sense, it's the function H1 that have a zero value at both end. The trace is equal to zero at both ends. That, that is what H10 is. And let me give you a few properties. The first property is that H10 will actually be the closure of D for the norm of H1. So, so now, of course, D will be dense in H10. As a matter of fact, that will be its closure. Second uh, property is that H10 will be included in H1 as expected, but it will not be H1. In other words, you will have functions in H1 that do not belong to H10. And finally, if you endow H10 with the norm of H1, then it is a Hilbert space. Okay, now let me introduce the Poincare inequality. Also, uh, there is a generalization called the Frederick uh, theorem. And here is, is what it says if uh, you consider the norm L2, of a function in H10 that can be bounded by a constant times the L2 norm of the derivative. That constant will only depend on the domain, so it basically only depends on the bounded interval of R you're, con you're, you're considering. Now, you can see that this would not work if you were in H1. Right? There is absolutely no way you're going to be able to bound the L2 norm of a function in L1 by the L2 norm of its derivative. Think about a constant function. Well, that's going to be in H1, no problem. Uh, the, the constant can be anything, right? And, and of course, well, the norm of this constant will be as high as you want. How can you possibly bound this L2 norm of the constant by something which is the derivative of the constant, which is zero? This is not gonna happen. So you see, uh, if it is h10, then obviously if it's a constant, then it's uh, zero at both ends, then it's going to be zero, right? So what we're saying is, you have to be in h10 for this to work. It's not going to work if you're in h1. Basically, think about a flying carpet. That flying carpet, uh, you know, can take any, 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 any height, right? So if, if you don't have a way to attach it, uh, you know, basically to, 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 to take it somewhere and just, just attach it to that, to that, to, the, to, 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 to both ends, then it can, it can fly at any altitude. So that, that's what we're saying. But if you are in H10, what the Poincaré inequality says is that the norm L2 of V will be bounded by a constant times the norm L2 of V prime. And there is a nice consequence for this, which is that, you know, what is normally a, no, a semi-norm, uh, meaning it's not a norm, you, you, you can't uh, guarantee that if the, 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 the semi-norm of v is equal to zero, that's not necessarily imply v is equal to zero, then that semi-norm will be a norm in H10. The semi-norm that I'm considering here is uh, the, the L2 norm of v prime. That obviously, for the reasons I just explained, uh, that would not be a norm on H1. But what it will, what, what, what's going to happen is it's going to be a norm in uh, H10. And indeed, uh, that semi-norm 
in uh, uh, defined in H1 uh, as this will satisfy in H10 that first inequality, which is pretty obvious. But the second part is not so obvious, which is that we will have uh, that thanks to the Poincaré inequality, we will be able to bound uh, the uh, norm uh, um, in H1 by the seminorm in H1, which is the norm L2 of the derivative. So let me define the norm in H10 as the seminorm in H1, in other words, simply as the norm L2 of the derivative, and the inner product in H10 simply as the inner product in L2 of the derivatives. Theorem, the space H10 ended with this inner product is a Hilbert space.